Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So I went to the library and I checked out way too many books, which is a problem because it is summer and I don't read as much in the summer. So I don't know why I thought I could check out this many books and still finish them all. But here we are. You know how some people have like a problem with online shopping where they like just keep shopping? That's all I'm gonna say about that and my library habits. But anyways, let's dive in and see what I checked out at the library. If any of these sound interesting, stay tuned because I will likely be reviewing it. I think there's only one book I probably won't review in the series, in the in the books that I checked out. But if anything else sounds interesting, or if you have another suggestion for me based off of the books that I show you, please let me know and I'm happy to check it out. I know someone did suggest something on one of my last videos. Unfortunately, that book, I think it was like the Book of Disquiet, was checked out at my library right now so i'm gonna have to wait for someone to return it before i can actually get the book back but other than that let's just dive in and see what we have so the first one right at the top is the history of mathematics a very short introduction so these books i've read a couple other very short introductions and they're just really really small books but they really pack a lot in i do find that the quality varies in these short introductions from really really good to kind of and it really depends on the author. So there's not just one author who does these books, there's a lot. And they do very short introductions for everything. So this one is mathematics, but there is quite literally, sometimes they have a list of all the ones they have in the back is quite literally like everything. Um, there's a, sh a short introduction to everything. Like I said, quality varies by author, but I'm interested to see what this one is and um, see how it is and see kind of what they cover as Mathematics is a very broad field and I want to know what they're going to choose to put in this very short introduction. So very short introduction. That's what's here. We're going to see how it is. Move to the side. The next one I'm going to show together and that is a manga series I've been meaning to read for a while, but I couldn't find volumes one and two. So I was kind of stuck there, but I found them at the library today. So I had to grab them because I want to see how they were. I've heard other people say they're really good, other people recommend them, so I really have been wanting to try them. I did notice that my library added the ebook version on the ebook app that they use that I can access for free. However, I really do prefer reading books in print. Not against reading ebooks, but I really do prefer just holding a physical book. So I was excited to see that I could read these in person, or in person, <laughs> in print. And those are high, high Q. IQ. This is the volleyball sports manga. At least that's my understanding of what this is. I have heard so many good things about these series and I really want to give it a try. Not sure if it's going to be my cup of tea. Maybe I'll hate it, but I've definitely heard so much about it that I wanted to give it a try. I did get volumes one and two and that is because I find sometimes that volume one can kind of struggle to get started. That's something that I find that's a common problem in manga because the author is trying to introduce so much and something about the format or the way things are. Volume one can kind of be a little scattered and all over the place. So I definitely want to try one and two to see the whole flow of the first two volumes. Also, if I read volume one and I'm very interested in a manga, sometimes if I don't check out volume two, when I go back to the library, volume two has since been checked out. So now I have to wait like four weeks or eight weeks or I, I can get in the game of waiting where I'm kind of just waiting for someone else to return the book. So by getting one and two, I kind of prevent the problem by at least being able to read the first two volumes before someone else has a chance. Someone could grab volume three, but I, I've been burned too many times by this. So the waiting on volume two of My Love Mix Up 2. Volume one and volume three were in there, but volume two was still missing and they don't own it. It's, it's like on order. So still waiting on Love Mix Up, My Love Mix Up. Hi Q, very interested in reading these. These probably won't take me too long. These two will probably just be like an afternoon or an evening or maybe even a morning. So we'll see how those are. This is the one that I'm probably not going to review. I just wanted to show it because I did get it in my library. Um, this is a German grammar book, so I do not know if you watch my study with me videos, but I am attempting to obtain my B2 certificate in German, so I am beyond a beginner level in German, um, obviously, but I am not fluent. I'm trying to obtain my certificate, not to be fluent, but to just have a B2 level. So the library has a lot of good books that are Interme or um, introductory level or very beginner level and very beginner friendly, which are very, which was very helpful several years ago when I was more of a beginner. But now I'm looking for something more advanced and I did find this in their foreign language section and the entire book is in German, which I did think was going to be very, very helpful. So I'm going to study out of this book, hopefully in the mornings. Um, I've changed some things around in the house. So now I can go back to studying in the morning. There was some stuff going on that I've since corrected. So I can now study in the morning again. And I'm going to be using this book, which will be 
which I hope will be really, really good. But because it's more academic, um, I probably won't be reviewing it. I'm just really interested to give it a try. Thought I might show it to you. And it just kind of looks pretty. So that's just me. The next comics I got, they're not books, they're comics that I got were ones that I have not seen in the library for a while, so I'm glad they came back. I know it's a popular series, they're always checked out in my library, so I'm glad that I saw them. And that's the Dr. Aphra series. I got the next two volumes, and that is Worst Among Equals and the Unspeakable, Unspeakable Rebel Super Weapon. So this one feels much thicker. The Worst Among Equals feels like a much thicker comic than Unspeakable Rebel Super Weapon, but I'm interested to read both of these, and these will be in that Dr. Aphra series that I was reading. Um, so yeah, they were both in and I was surprised because I don't think I've seen all, actually the entire series was in at the library and I don't think I've seen the entire series in since I've started reading this series. So I decided to grab these two and give them a read. Next up is The Math Behind. Discover the mathematics of everyday events and they have some examples on the cover. The amount of g-force on a roller coaster, the chance of your toast landing butter side down, measuring the speed of a serve. So I think this is just going to be a fun general reader in mathematics. They seem to be very, very um, like one simple one page examples, or this one was two pages, but they're um, a good combination of everyday events and mathematics. So I was going to be interested in giving this one a read. I decided to pull it out and to give this one a read, see how I feel about it. So yeah, this is the math behind. This one's by Colin Beveridge. I realize I haven't been saying the author's names throughout this. Colin Beveridge for this one. The next three kind of have stemmed from the reading I've done in Basilisks and Beowulf, which was a book about monsters in the Anglo-Saxon world, which I really, really enjoyed. You can go check out my review if you are interested in learning more about that. And Image on the Edge, which is a book I just returned to the library by Michael Camille, I believe that book was. And that was about manuscript illustrations in the medieval ages, or also all art that just occurred on like the edges or the fringe of society. So with that being said, I wanted to get some more introductory or like general readers on those topics. Image on the Edge was very interesting, but it was a little over my head because it was geared more towards an academic audience or at least an audience that has a little more familiarity with the subject, something that I unfortunately did not have, at least no more than the average person. So I decided to do a little bit of light reading and have some fun along the way. So I was able to find the section in my library that had all the books on this. So I got some stuff out. First one I got, which this one's more in line with the Basilisks and Beowulf, so monsters in the Anglo-Saxon world, and that is medieval monsters. And there's some fun little stuff going on on the back as well. And this is by Damien Kempf and M Maria L. Gilbert. So this just seems like a an interesting book. There seems to be lots of illustrations and a little bit of text. So this seems like much more accessible to a general reader or someone who doesn't have as much experience in the field of monsters, which I found very, very nice. Um, I think maybe I should have started here before going to Image on the Edge and I might return to that book after doing a little bit of this reading. So yeah, I'm really excited to read this one, really excited to see what's going on in all these pictures and learn a little bit more, a little bit more about medieval monsters. So we have this one. Next, and this one goes more along with the Image on the Edges book. Actually, the next two books I'm going to show are about image on the edge, so art on the edge, or manuscript illustration. So this one is image in the margins, and this is by Margaret um, McIlwain Nishimura. And this one seemed like a, this one seemed a little older, just by looking at the front of the book, maybe I shouldn't assume, looks like this was from, I guess I don't know. This one just seemed a little newer than the other one. I'm just making stuff up, I guess. Uh, 2009. Maybe not. Maybe I could be completely wrong. This one seemed interesting. We'll just go there. That's a nice, safe, neutral statement. This one seemed interesting as well, and it seemed a lot more accessible to the general reader. So we have, again, a little bit more text, but lots of illustrations. Um, lots of illustrations that really just break down all the little stuff. Something about Image and the Edge, which um, the book was older than I thought. I um, looked up the author, and unfortunately he had passed away, which I... I guess I thought that was a recent event and then I saw that he had passed away quite a, quite a number of years ago and the book was actually written in I think it was 1999 so it was a much older book um, and there weren't a lot of color illustrations which I think I would have preferred and some of the illustrations they would just show like the whole page in image on the edge because the book wasn't I guess trying to zoom in it was zooming in on specific details but it kind of 
it expected you to already have some passing familiarity with some of the stuff in the book. This one does a lot more of that zooming in on the specific little bits so you can get a better view of them, which I thought was really, really interesting. And of course, it's all in color, which I really, really like as well. So I'm really looking forward to this. I think I'm going to learn a lot from this book, and I'm excited to see what's in here. Finally, the last book of this completely irresponsible library trip um, is The Art of Medieval Manuscripts. This one just has that gold cover and with uh, some of the, the text on it, but it's another illustrated book with just simple text to illustrate these things that are on it. I think this is another really good um, entry level stuff. So basically I'm trying to combine the three. This one is by, hmm, so does this even say? This might just be like a compiled thing. Oh, Christina Weinstein. Weinstein. Um, I'm trying to put these three books together to kind of get a better view of um, medieval art art in the medieval ages and specifically like that manuscript illustration, manuscript illumination side because I found that stuff so interesting. So I'm trying to use these three together to kind of build on those books that I read previously. And this is something that I think is really, really good or something that I find a real I don't, pleasure seems like fancy, a real pleasure of reading nonfiction. But a real advantage is you'll read something and it will trigger your interest in something else, which will trigger your interest in something else. And you kind of have this ever expanding net and you can connect the different books that you read in a wide variety of ways, which for me feels very, very fulfilling. And I really, really enjoy that, which is why I enjoy things like this, a book like Basca Basilisks and Beowulf, which triggered the image on the edge, which triggered these three books. So you can kind of see like the chains in my reading as I just kind of follow my passions as they go. And I find it a really, really enjoyable way to read and I can kind of just naturally follow things I'm interested in for as long or as short as I want to because there's always going to be another book on the topic that I want. So that is it. That is everything that I irresponsibly checked out of the library for my June reading. It's quite a bit. I was literally hefting this stuff around the library. People probably thought it was very, very, I don't know, academic or like I don't have a social life. That's what this looks like. But I'm very interested in all this stuff. If anything in here uh, sparks an interest or you'd like to know how I felt about it, I will be doing reviews on everything except for probably this one here, this German grammar book. Um, so yeah, stick around. And if you notice there wasn't a lot of fiction in this book, that's because I hit the nonfiction floor of the library and then I had this many books and then I decided I was not going to the fiction floor because I had too much to read already. So um, yeah. That's kind of the situation here. Other than that, everyone, I hope you have a really great day and you enjoy your June reads as well. Thank you for watching.